All right, today's video is gonna be for my Mazda 5 owners. Um, I haven't posted any uh, Mazda 5 videos lately because I've been working on other cars that I own. But um, today I'm gonna be doing the coolant change. And uh, there's nothing wrong with my coolant. I'm just gonna, it's a uh, maintenance schedule. So according to the owner's manual, this is a 2013, by the way, Mazda 5 touring model, okay? According to my owner's manual, it states that I have to replace at first 120,000 miles or 10 years. Then after that, um, it requests that I change it every 60,000 miles or five years, which is half. So that's a significant drop. But I mean, that's what the owner manuals say. And I like to take care of my cars, make sure they last a long time. So I'm just gonna do a follow what the uh, owner's manual says, okay? Um, and I, I like to use OEM when I can. This is um, OEM f a coolant from Mazda, and the manual calls for FL22 coolant. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll be using today. Uh, the capacity it uses. Let me see. I have it here. It uses. For US and Canada uh, models, automatic transmission, 6.6 um, .6 liters or 7 US quarts. So uh, each gallon is 3.78, so I have two. Um, yeah, and that should, that should do me right there. And then make sure you have a clean um, uh, funnel here and a clean drain pan so that. Um, and make sure you save your bottles because we're gonna, after you refill it with the new one, the old stuff, you gotta put it back in the old bottles and do the right thing and recycle it, okay? Don't don't put it down the drain, um, you know, do the right thing. Okay, so when you're doing this, make sure your engine is cold, okay? Don't do this when your engine's hot. Uh, you don't wanna burn your hand and hurt yourself. Get these ready to go, okay? So, this is the Mazda 5 engine bay here, okay? This is uh, the radiator fill cap, okay? Um, this is where you're gonna fill the majority of it after you drain, and after that, you're gonna close this back up and you're not gonna touch that anymore because you're gonna follow this and you're gonna use the reservoir, okay? It has a full and low line. So uh, we're gonna follow that. And then there's also a bleeding procedure to get all the bubbles out of the system. But I'll show you that procedure later after we drain the uh, coolant, okay? Now, the coolant plug, I don't know if you can see, okay, there's a white, let me see, if it can, a white drain plug there. Okay, I'm gonna try and go at it from the top if I can because the hole is right there. But if I can't, I may have to go from the bottom, which is here. Okay, and let me see. It is, I can't really see. Oh yeah, see that little white thing right there? That's the drain plug there. Um, you unscrew that and then just below it, you can't see it from this angle, but there's a little tube and then it'll come out of that hole through this hole down to your drink pan. Okay, this is where you're gonna catch it. Um, and if I can't get it from there, then I will have to take out this whole um, bottom uh, piece right here, okay? It's just maybe like 10 screws. It's not too hard, it's easy. But uh, yeah, let me see if I can get it from the top first. Okay, so I'm gonna stick my hand in there. Trying to get for the. Oh, yeah. It's. And loosened it. So let's see if I can get it to drain. Okay, oh, I hear it. Okay, I didn't take it out completely. But there it goes. Now, you can slowly release this. And when you open it, it should go a lot faster because the air is going to start going through the system. OK, 
Okay, let's open that up. Okay, put that there. You could probably open this too for your reservoir. Okay, and it's going. It's going pretty slow. Let me see if I can take out, loosen it up some more. Right there. I can't see it. There it is, going faster. Can't see it. Yep. So we'll let that drain and completely. Then um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill fill this up and then we can fill this up a little bit because it has to go through I wanted to flush this line so you're gonna put um, water in it but not just regular water tap water you're gonna use distilled water okay and the reason why is because if you use tap water let me see I got some distilled water here okay. distilled water is filtered water so there's no minerals and, and chemicals and stuff like that that you get from the tap water when it comes from the the city so um, you want to run this distilled water through your system. Um, the tap water is not good because it's going to leave like um, minerals and stuff like that and it's going to corrode your system. So use distilled water, okay? It's only what, like a dollar for a gallon, I believe. Yeah, so we'll let that drain completely and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so. Um, I gotta get the coolant out of this reservoir. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna lift it up so all of this coolant can come out. As you can see, it's kind of at a low angle and it comes back up. So that is not gonna drain. So let me um, um, unloosen this. There's gonna be two two clips. Let me see. My microphone's in the way. I don't know if back there you can see. You can get at it with a flat uh, flat head. Um, just loosen that tab and then there's another one on the side here yeah, right here behind these wires my HID wire. so right here just push that to the side and then this thing should come up and then you can drain it okay so I got it out and loose and then you're just gonna pick it up And let it let gravity do its thing. See, it's starting to go through the hole. So now that it's empty, what I'm gonna do is probably I'm probably gonna clean this up a little bit. So I'm probably disconnected from here. Um, check your hoses. Make sure they're not brittle and cracking. If it is, you will need to replace it. But mine looks in decent shape. So if I can do this with one hand and hold the camera, we'll see if I can. Do there. So we'll set that down here, and I'm gonna clean this guy up a little bit. After that, um, and then in here, put distilled water, shake it out, shake all the stuff out, and uh, that should be good enough. put this cap back on so when I rinse it down none of that tap water goes in look at that like it was new pretty let's go put this stuff back and then uh, we're gonna fill this up with uh, distilled water shake it around a bit get all that old stuff out and then uh, drain it okay so unscrew your cap Get your distilled. Pour some in there. Just enough. Maybe a little bit more. Gotta save the rest of this for uh, the uh, engine flush. So put the cap back on. Just cover this hole. Look around a bit. Okay, and then when you 
uh, drain this, put it in the along with the uh, the old coolant, so you can recycle it properly. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna plug this back in. Cool. Clean. Okay, make sure that the line's connected. Nothing's obstructing it. Go here. Okay, let's check our coolant. Okay, it's dripping, so that's good. It's near the end. Now we're gonna start to add the distilled water, and we're gonna flush out whatever's left in the system, um, and just pay attention to um, the color of the coolant because you want it to come out clear and that'll let you know that um, you flushed it out correctly. Okay, get yourself one of these guys with the wider diameter holes because it fits directly over the hole so you don't spill, see? Okay, let's get our water. Okay, distilled, open that up the cap here start pouring their water in slowly and you listen as you can see the green the color is still green so we got to add we got to keep adding more water and do that till it starts to get clear okay it's starting to come out clear so that's what you want right there okay after that we're gonna plug up the hole and then we're gonna start to fill it up with your Mazda coolant here okay so I think it's about ready a little drippy drips okay like that so um, let's go ahead and like I said, I got it from the top, so I'm gonna plug up the holes and we'll screw that back in. Okay. It wasn't even on that tight, so when I took it off, so I'm gonna do a little hand tight here. Okay, so I got down there with a small pair of pliers and I just turned it just a little bit. Like I said, remember, that uh, bolt is plastic, so you don't want to break it, okay? So let's start filling the system up. Okay, there's my Mazda coolant, FL22 mix. Um, now, if you're not going to use Mazda, um, you get your coolant from the auto parts store. Make sure that it's 50, 50 pre mixed. Um, okay, auto one's done. I'm gonna crack up with my second bottle. Oh yeah, and save these, okay? So you're gonna put your old, uh, your old coolant in there. Okay, I'm just about four almost. So that's at the full mark. Now it is going to go down after the bleeding procedure, but let's see if it's any more. Okay, yeah, that's full. Okay. Uh, try not to make a mess because that's going to be a false leak when you when you start looking for leaks later. So, put your cap back on. And don't forget to fill your your reservoir here. So we'll fill this up to the full line. Okay. So that is to the full line there. So we'll go ahead and we'll cap this off. Okay. Make sure this is on. Okay. Check your drain bolt, okay, and try to clean up any um, overspill. 
okay on this side and this side I did a little bit so okay here I am start your engine let it warm up to engine operating temperature so these uh, this 2013 doesn't have a temperature gauge it has a temperature light so when you start a cold engine the blue light will turn on okay and as soon as that turns off then that means that your engine is ready uh, it's warmed up okay now this is the this this vehicle the 2013 Mazda 5 uh, has a self bleeding system I believe uh, according to the repair manual I know um, older vehicles we used to in order to bleed the system you would turn the heater on on high and turn it all the way to max and then that'll open up your heater core and that'll have the coolant uh, go through your system and bleed out your system okay so um, but for Mazda 13 Mazda 5 2013 there's a procedure that I'm gonna do and the first step you're gonna do is it says to run my engine at 2500 rpms for five minutes I know it's a little bit long but that's what it says so I'm gonna run my engine for at 2500 rpms for five minutes then after that five minutes it's up you're gonna increase the rpms to 3000 rpms for five seconds okay and then after that you let you release the accelerator you let it idle and then it says to repeat the steps twice so you're gonna do this procedure twice after that you're gonna stop the engine ex inspect for coolant leaks and uh, check the coolant level after Okay, after the engine coolant um, temperature has cooled down. So after we do these two procedures, I'm gonna stop the engine, let the engine cool, I'm gonna go eat, um, I'm gonna, I don't know, whatever I gotta do, uh, hang out with the kids. Then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna check my fluid level. If it's low, I'm gonna fill it up a little bit more. And then uh, I'm gonna do the uh, bleeding procedure again if I have to, okay? And um, if you're gonna drive around, make sure you have the coolant uh, with you in the car so that um, if it gets low somewhere, like wherever you drive to, um, you can, you have the coolant with you, okay? So, but I'm doing this at home and um, yeah, so let's start. I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. Yes, for five minutes. Okay, so here we go. Get it to 25. There it is. It's kind of hard. Keep the throttle over there. There it is. Okay, set my timer. Five minutes. Okay, I'm two minutes in. Make sure you have the uh, temperature indicator doesn't turn on. Make sure it's not red. If it's red, that means it's overheating. So you don't want that light to turn on, okay? So continuing, 2,500 RPMs. Okay, got about a minute and a half left. Um, just a reminder, make sure you're doing this outside in a well-ventilated area. Uh, don't do it in a garage uh, where the exhaust fumes or fill up the, uh, you know, Make sure you don't hurt anybody, especially um, yourself or anybody else. So let's get back up to 25. Lost my concentration there. Okay, special note here. It indicates that if the accelerator pedal is depressed continuously for a specific time, the engine speed may decrease to the idle speed. This is due to the fuel cutoff control operation, which prevents overheating and it does not indicate a malfunction. So I was about 10 seconds left and the idle speed decreased by itself to the idle speed. Okay, so uh, let me see if I can do this operation again because we got to do it twice. And let me see if um, it'll let me do it a second time. Okay, round two, four minutes left. Okay, got about a minute and a half left and um, after the five minutes is up you got to raise it to 3,000 rpms just for five seconds only okay so let's see if uh, round two will let me do it five four 
three, two, one, raise it. Oh, it did it on its own. Okay, so it must be a safety uh, feature in the vehicle. Uh, as soon as it hit five minutes, the RPMs dropped back to idle. So I couldn't raise it to 3000 RPMs for the five seconds, okay? So now, after round two, it says that you need to turn off the engine and expect, inspect for uh, the coolant level. So let's turn off the engine. Okay, let's go out. Let's inspect. So again, don't touch this, this is hot. But your reservoir here. So my level is at the full mark there. Okay, I'm gonna let the, the engine cool down. Um, so I'll go eat, hang out with the kids and do something. I'll come back maybe an hour or two and uh, we'll check the coolant level, make sure that it is where it's supposed to be. Um, if it drops a little bit, so go ahead and add some more and then um, repeat the procedure. Okay, so check for leaks. I don't see anything leaking from down there. I moved the pan so I can see if there's any leaks coming from the hole. There's nothing on the ground, that's good, that's clear. Okay, it's been about two hours, so the fluid down, went down just a little bit, so I'm going to fill that back up, um, and hold on, I need to get a towel, okay, make sure you get yourself some towels, because, um, you're gonna open this up, but you're gonna open it up slowly, okay? Be very careful. Make sure your engine is not hot, because if it is, you need to you need it to cool down. And if you open this, hot steam will start to uh, come out, and then uh, it'll burn your hands. And then you're gonna have to uh, visit the hospital because you didn't listen. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna check the pressure in the radiator hose. So we're good there. So okay. So make sure you get yourself some towels and then turn this a quarter of the way, okay? And do it slowly. If you hear hissing, that means it's still pressure. I would close it back up, but okay. That's a quarter of the way. I don't hear anything, so I think we're in the clear. Open it up, we're clear. Okay, so now that that's done, we are clearly low on coolant. So let's Continue to add coolant. Drive your car around. Let me see if that uh, lower the. Uh, see if it takes any more coolant. So we're at the full level. Okay, I'm about to start pr uh, round number three. Um, I actually hooked up one of my uh, scanners here to tell me what the engine coolant temperature is since I don't have a gauge. It's sitting at 86 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, 86 degrees Celsius converted to Fahrenheit, which is 186 degrees Fahrenheit. And for normal operating temperature for a Mazda is between 180 and 220. So. Um, that's good there. Okay, round three, about a minute and a half left. Now rounds one and two, it wouldn't let me go to the 3000 RPM mark to do the five seconds. It always would uh, go back to idle around exactly five minutes. So The data stream is going down, live stream. Like I said, there's no temperature gauge on here, it's just the red and blue lights to tell you if it's hot, your engine's hot or cold and when the lights off it's normal operating temperature okay we got 20 seconds left and there it is so that's what i'm talking about i have my foot on the throttle and it went back down to idle um according to my live data stream we're at 93 degrees celsius so, um, that is about a 199 degrees Fahrenheit, 
Um, so it is going to go down. I will do around four, and after that, I will check my fluids. I'll take it for a drive around, and you know what? I'll do it the old, even the old school way, just to make sure. I'll, I'll, I'll throw my heater on high. I will kick this on on high, and then I'll drive around with the windows down, uh, and I'll see if um, any more, um, if the fluid will go down more. Okay, so uh, round four, I got interrupted by DoorDash. I was in the middle of uh, doing the procedure and DoorDash came by and brought us some lunch so I had to stop. So right now I'm gonna skip round four. I'm just gonna, like I said, drive around the block. Um, I do have the heater on high, fan on high, and I'm gonna go run an errand real quick, see um, what happens after this. Okay, so I just got back from my uh, test drive. Um, I went a good distance with the heater on. Okay, we did it the old school way. Um, and then I went a good distance without the heater on, so no air. And then uh, it started to get hot, so I turned on my air conditioning to cool. So I was burning in here. So uh, temperature readings. Okay, uh, it went. It was between uh, 192 to 203 degrees okay so 192 was my lowest driving 203 was my highest and as it sits right now it's at sitting at 199 degrees so all those are within spec so it's good there again I'm gonna hold my um, coolant in my trunk just in case um, I'm gonna turn it off let it cool I'll check it again in a couple hours just to make sure that the levels are all good and then um, if I have to do uh, an errand or make a beer run or something um, throughout the week, I'll just I'll just you know inspect the uh, the coolant, make sure it's all good, okay? But yeah, that's that is my maintenance um, coolant uh, video. Hopefully this will help you guys. Um, again, do that um, air bleed at your own risk. I'm just showing you my experience on my own vehicle okay i don't want you guys coming back to me saying oh well, you know um, i follow what you did and you know something happened so um yeah do this at your own risk if you don't feel comfortable doing it um i suggest you bring it to a pro professional or a mechanic okay and to those um mazda if you're a certified mazda mechanic please let me know if i did that step wrong uh, for the air bleed um, running the engine at 2500 rpms for five minutes and then bumping it up to 3000 rpms for five seconds um, I never got a chance to do that it always fell into that um, uh, safety mode um, so let me know in the comments and uh, yeah that's that's my video so hopefully I'll do another Mazda video for you guys um, I don't know what else I need to do. I do have a um, whole seven inch um, dash thing that I need to do here. So I need to replace that. It comes with a GPS and the reverse camera. I'll probably uh, show you an installation on that. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna do that, but it looks OEM. It looks just like this, but with a, a touch screen. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you uh, like the video, please hit the like button, uh, comment, and um, subscribe. Okay, thank you.